In this video I'm going to give a brief introduction to the idea of Jensen's inequality and this is in honor of my nephew Jensen. And while Jensen's inequality can be and it is a very difficult powerful general mathematical principle that's used in a lot of different fields I'm going to cover the basic idea of Jensen's inequality here for a non-technical audience and hopefully you can see that it's kind of interesting. So Jensen's inequality was named after Johann Jensen and he was a Danish mathematician and he's given credit in the year 1906 with this idea but again what he did was a little more a little more technical a little more general pretty much what he said is if you take any convex function now what's a convex function well an example is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared and this red function behind the text here this is a convex function now how do I know that it's convex well I remember it's convex because it's shaped like a V or shaped like a U so any graph of a function that is open upwards like this is convex the opposite of convex is if you had an upside down U shaped like the mouth of a cave and you can always remember that that is concave because it looks like a cave convex with a V is shaped like a V so Jensen said take any convex function we're gonna look at x squared and then take any two numbers a and b and for any two numbers let's skip over this stuff for the moment we'll come back to it um, don't let your eyes roll back in your head yet the way I always remembered this idea that I'm trying to explain is if you have a convex function the average of the function must be bigger than the function of the average what do I mean well let's look at some example numbers for our example function here so you can see exactly what's going on so this red line is the graph of x squared so that's our function x squared so here is a and a is 0 in our little example and b is our other number and b is equal to 2 in this example and so what are we talking about what is an average of the function well put 0 which is our a number into this function x squared 0 squared is 0 now let's look at our number b which is 2 put 2 into the square function 2 squared is 4 and so 2 on the red line look over to the left and that's the number 4 2 squared so the average of the function is saying well uh, 0 squared is 0 2 squared is 4 what's the average of those two numbers 0 and 4 well you can always visualize the average of a function by doing this and this is what Jensen had in mind here if we take and connect the two points on the function then you can see for any average even if it's not right in the center but for any combination of the 0 squared number and the 2 squared which is 4 you'll be somewhere on this black line so the average of the function is going to put us here at the average of 0 and 4 which is 2 so let me draw a little circle there so we can see what we're talking about when we say the average of the function so the average of the function has to be bigger than the function of the average of the two numbers well what are we talking about there well the two numbers are a and b 0 and 2 if you average 0 with 2 0 plus 2 is 2 and then you divide by 2 so the average of 0 and 2 is 1 so the function of the average what we're talking about is take the number 1 and put it into that squared function up there and 1 squared equals 1 and you can see where that 1 squared number is let's just draw a, num uh, a line right here from the number 1 up to the red line and so uh, right we're talking about right there let me draw another little circle there so we can see what we're talking about instead of a blue circle let me make that into a green circle 
and so the average of the function is the blue to the average of 0 and 4 the function of the average is what we get if we put the number 1 into the squared function and we get 1 squared now this technical formula here let me just show you how this tells us that the average of the function is greater than the function of the average. Jensen made it more general. He said for any number t between 0 and 1. But let's ignore that. Let's just suppose t is a half. Let t equal 0.5. Then what do we get? All Jensen would say is if t is a half times, so take a half times f of a. Well, a is 0, f of a is 0 squared, so that's times 0. So let's do times 0 here, plus 1 minus t, 1 minus a half. Well, that's also a half, 0.5, times f of b. Well, b is 2, f of b is 2 squared, so that's 4. And Jensen just said, well, a half times 0 is 0, half times 4 is 2, so all we're really saying here is that 2 has to be greater than what we get on the right hand side over here which is the function of just means we're going to square what we get in the middle here a half times a which is 0 plus a half times 2 and so then what we're going to do is we're going to square all that so a half times 0 is 0 a half times 2 is 1, so what we have here in the middle is the 1, and we're going to stick it in our function, and we're going to square it, and all we've done is really prove that 2 is bigger than 1, but, you know, it's a little more general than this, but I hope you get the idea, and I hope you enjoyed this little introductory video on Jensen's inequality in honor of nephew Jensen.